What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this beautiful Tuesday night, October 25th, 2022. It's about 9 uh, 9.01 p.m. California time. Latest quake out here on the globe shows a 2.6 earthquake and a 4.3. 2.6 going to be, uh, well, looks like over here around the Java Trench area. All right, let's go ahead and check out some activity happening around the uh, California area today. We did see a 5.1 earthquake down here uh, on the list just outside of San Jose. That's going to be listed right up here on this map, right on the Calaveras Fault Zone, right about the central section of the Calaveras Fault Zone. And uh, so far we've seen uh, a few aftershocks as well, including a 3.5 right here, which is the largest in this little cluster of uh, aftershocks. And uh, we are getting a little bit of migration along this fault system here. Uh, meaning that these aftershocks are starting to stretch away from the main area of the main 5.1. Who knows? This might be an, a foreshock. Never know. We don't know until it happens, right? You can never say it's a foreshock unless it, uh, unless something does happen uh, here, but we don't know that. 5.1 was felt pretty broadly over the area into sections of the Bay Area. Let's go ahead and check out the Did You Fill It reports. And again, I do appreciate all the comments there on the videos of the felt reports there. I didn't get a chance to reply to anybody, but uh, I do appreciate it. San Jose, Salinas, San Francisco, uh, even portions of Rockland and Sacramento felt this. And also up here at Reno uh, into Nevada. So 5.1, not a major quake. It's basically a moderate sized earthquake, but it was felt broadly over the area. And uh, most of the reported shaking reported as light uh, and possibly there to the moderate side. Uh, a little bit of technical info here on this uh, Calaveras fault zone. The USGS put this out here uh, in regards to that 5.1 here today. Uh, it's obviously a right lateral strike slip fault, a major plate boundary, right? North American plate and the Pacific plate boundary. Uh, there is three separate segments. The northern segment of the Calaveras Fault is virtually locked. And this segment of the fault creeps at a rate between 2 and 3 mm per year, which is very minimal. But um, we haven't seen any activity there on the northern end in over, well, 465 years. Uh, it looks like that uh, it looks like however all that we know about this date of the last surface rupture rupturing earthquake is that it predates a 1776 date now that's the northern segment there has been some activity within the central uh, segment um, the northern end of the central segment of the Calaveras fault last produced a notable earthquake back in October coincidentally 2007 the uh, 5.4 earthquake which actually ruptured towards the south um so yeah there's there's a little bit of historical data on here the southern half of the central segment uh most seismically active segment of the fault it produced a 6.2 the morgan hill earthquake back in 1984 and a m6.2 earthquake back in 1911 so i pulled up um let's see here what do we do with all those earthquakes here got to be on one of these maps there we go <laughs> got a lot of windows open here i was looking at this for uh, quite a bit today uh and i just pulled up historical data in this area the 5.1 of course occurred right here in the blue circle and if you look the last earthquake in this area 5.0 and above uh, was the 2007 earthquake the one i just mentioned there 5.5 um roughly to the north a little bit uh, just a little bit but on the same fault system the Calaveras fault zone here and where this 5.1 struck today it's a uh, that's where the 1984 struck 1984 earthquake the 6.2 so technically this could be considered an aftershock I don't know I mean that's a lot of time that has passed so I really can't I really don't like saying that when that much time has passed as far as aftershock activity goes uh, but it is definitely within that location. And again, the northern segment here of the Calaveras Fault is virtually locked, as noted there uh, by the USGS. And it uh, looks like there was one earthquake back in 1861, a 5.8 in that area. Uh, so certain segments of this Calaveras Fault Zone are 
worth watching. Um, you know, it's it's been a little while since we've seen any major rupture out here uh, along quite a few systems out here, quite a few uh, fault systems out here in California. Um, you know, we've been pretty lucky far as any damaging, major damage earthquake here around the Bay Area. So uh, things, you know, I don't know, things could be getting uh, pretty active right now. Uh, and there's a little bit of chat about the Calaveras Fault and the Hayward Fault interaction. And uh, if that is indeed, uh, if those two are indeed connected somewhat below uh, the surface there, then that could be uh, significant uh, impl implications there for the potential of a maximum strength larger earthquake uh, on the Hayward. The USGS and the, uh, well, this Wikipedia article kind of talks about it a little bit here. Uh, between those two fault systems and the connection of them. There is a little bit of aftershock forecast here from the USGS, surprisingly, uh, in regards to this earthquake today. This was put out, of course, by the USGS. According to their forecasts, there is a 1% chance of one or more aftershocks that are larger than the magnitude 5. Now, I remember when they kind of did this with the Ridgecrest earthquakes. Uh, I remember back in 2019. I can't remember what the percentage was, but sure enough, a bigger one happened the following day on July 5th, 2019. Um, there will likely be smaller aftershocks within the next week with up to 5 magnitude 3 or higher. Uh, we've already seen one so far. Uh, magnit magnitude 3 and higher aftershocks are large enough to be felt nearby, obviously. Um... There's a 1 in 8,000 chance of a magnitude 7 and above aftershocks within the next week. Such an earthquake is possible with very low probability. So the chances obviously um, are less as the uh, magnitudes get higher there. But you never know. I mean, it, these guys just kind of put out a forecast uh, in earthquakes. And one cannot, uh, you know, magic ball out there. Yep, tomorrow's going to be the big day. No. Definitely not, but there's always that likelihood of uh, seeing a larger quake, right, in any type of earthquake sequence that we're seeing right now. 5.1, and uh, there's quite a few aftershocks in there kind of spreading out across the faults, uh, north and south. So that's obvi obviously uh, something to watch pretty closely, I would say. Uh, the quake notification system, the early quake notification system, got uh, put out today. And uh, that, that was actually pretty cool. I didn't get one because I'm kind of out of the area, but I heard quite a few folks did uh, get that notification there from the shake alert. Basically within the circle, here is the uh, shake alert messages and the um, the seconds here that was given out, eight seconds. That's a, that's a pretty good notification, right? As long as you got your phone in hand, which kind of I do all the time. So most, I think most of us do. But, uh, and this was the magnitude estimates that were put out uh, from the qu early quake alert system, 4.8, 5.1, uh, originally a 5.1, and uh, gosh darn it, they were smack dab on with the uh, magnitude, so um, hooray, hooray for them. Pretty good uh, early notification system being put out there. So let's see what else we got uh, around the area. See if anything else has been adjusted with this activity. Um, regionally here around California, not so much. But remember here, we did see some activity stretching up prior to this activity. Let's bring back the last seven days of uh, 2.5. And there's a little bit of the earthquake activity. Uh, but there's some smaller ones in here as well. We were watching kind of a line of activity uh, down here to the uh, right around the Calaveras Fault interchange here with the San Andreas Fault and the Hayward Fault. A couple other different fault systems here. Um, it's all kind of bunched up in this area. I'll bring up the all magnitudes there, show you a little bit more. See all that activity down here? Just kind of bunching up, stretching up into the Calaveras Fault system. So uh, something was obviously brewing there, but you know, again, we don't know 100% certain that uh, an earthquake was going to pop off there. Obviously, it's got some slip rate accumulated. Uh, is there enough there for a bigger earthquake? Obviously, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, further down, things are on the mellow side a little bit. Not a whole lot of activity currently 
um, as we get away from this little swarm. So right now, here is the little hot spot of earthquake activity uh, up north into the uh, Gorda Plate here. This is the um, Gorda Plate, little microplate here, just shy of the Cascadia Megathrust at 2.9 at 4.8 kilometers. That one coming in uh, just earlier uh, this evening time frame. So still regionally a little bit of earthquake pressure out here along the west coast. Uh, some movement into the uh, Ridgecrest area as well and also the Garlock Fault Zone, although most of this activity from earlier this morning time frame. Not a whole lot going on throughout Southern Cal. One earthquake here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. And, um, you know, kind of getting back to this area here, you know, these little swarms that we've seen prior to this activity could have been a, a, an indicator, right? of something uh, about ready to happen. But it doesn't happen all the time, you know, because we do see a lot of uh, little swarms kick up on a certain segment of a fault system and then nothing happens. So, you know, it's pretty much like a 50-50 shot of possibly something brewing uh, in the much larger scale of things uh, as far as the magnitude goes with these little swarms. You know, and I, I kind of take note here too when we see swarms down here on, on the Brawley Seismic Zone, just south of this monster here, the San Andreas Fault. It's, you know, this segment right here is going to produce an 8.1 one day. Um, so anything, any little swarm could trigger stuff. So, you know, but there's no, there's not a 100% guaranteed uh, way of forecasting these or predicting these. It just doesn't work. The, the, um, the percentage of someone saying that there's going to be an earthquake here specifically on this fault system uh it's it's, it's low very low of course if i back out and say there's going to be a four pointer out here along the west coast somewhere in the next 10 days well shoot i mean that's obvious something's going to pop off here within the next 10 days so just kind of getting those odds out there you know a lot of a lot of people try to predict stuff and forecast stuff but Gotta just look at possibilities and percentages more than uh, the magic crystal ball. Alright, uh, what, what do we got here for the Wyoming area? Some activity kicking up here outside of Yellowstone it looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up the Yellowstone thumbnails here real quick and see what's uh, popping off here. It looks like a little bit of activity still this evening time frame. Notice these little earthquake spikes here across the region. Nothing big. Just all small microquakes popping off there. Uh, New Mexico, most of this activity here from earlier this morning time frame, except for this one up here, or uh, down here. Well, that's Oklahoma. I was wondering about this Amarillo earthquake. Uh, that was yeah, that was early, 2 o'clock in the morning time frame. So the newest one basically over here around Katy, Oklahoma area. Uh, outside of the Arbuckle Mountains. And there's fault systems that do run up here. Uh, this is a pretty shallow earthquake. Uh, let's see what we got out here as far as potential uh, culprits go. Um, I don't see a whole lot of pumping operations out there currently. Uh, and that's a pretty shallow earthquake. Very shallow. So not all these earthquakes are associated with the uh, pumping operations and the... Uh, wastewater operations out there injection of the wastewater down below but uh, sure enough they they do happen a lot within those oil fields uh, one earthquake out here around the uh, virginia area earlier this morning time frame a 2.6 nothing major going on uh, further across the country did see some activity ramping up here into the chile area down there way down there 220 kilometers deep into the Peru chile trench that one kicking off here about 6 30 uh, my time Today, 4.1, and uh, up here in the uh, Ecuador area, looks like some further activity just a little bit ago, about an hour and a half ago or so, uh, along the Peru Chile Trench. So still, things kind of uh, quiet, but it looks like it may be picking up a little bit here in terms of earthquake activity uh, within that region. The uh, Big Island, most of the activity here confined to the Pahala area, 2.3, the latest earthquake here on the map at about 32 kilometers deep. Alaska, not a whole lot going on up to the north. Uh, it looks like it, but this is all very typical microquake activity. Uh, getting a little bit of swarming kicking off here, it looks like. Um, and throughout the day today, uh, before and after that earthquake there in uh, California, 
So a little bit of adjustment going on with the North American plate and the Pacific plate boundary here. One earthquake way over here around the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, the uh, far western edge of the Aleutian Trench here. 10 kilometers for a 4.9. Japan, uh, Japan Trench and the Kuro Kamchaka Trench all pretty quiet for right now. Uh, there's that earthquake in the Philippines this morning. A little bit of aftershock activity uh, earlier this afternoon, but uh, not a whole lot. Got some movement uh, working its way down through the Indonesia area, it looks like. And uh, uh, most of this activity here in the Fiji area was early this morning and afternoon time frame. Just a couple fours and fives, but all awfully deep uh, down in that area. Over here around uh, Pakistan and the... What do we got here for the latest activity? Well, it looks like China, latest earthquake, uh, 4.5 at 10 kilometers. Nothing as we head our way west. I'm sure there's activity, but nothing above the 4.0 threshold. The earthquake in the Atlantic there, near the Rick Janes area, 4.6. That was early this morning, just after midnight. All right, trimmer. I'm kind of curious about trimmer activity here tonight along the Cascadia. And, uh, whoa, whoa, look at that. That's a little odd. That is really odd to see some trimmer activity way upstream by the locked area of the Cascadia. And that is, wow. Hmm. I've never seen that. To be honest, I've never seen that. Let's go back and check this real quick. Let's see. Uh, let's just go back the last couple years. Um, hopefully I don't shut down my computer. Uh, that's going to be a lot of trimmer, but I'm kind of curious to see exactly what, uh, what took place out there. So now it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's on there. I wonder why, where'd it go? Disappeared? 1023? Okay, we're missing a couple days. Uh, last couple days it looks like. So anyway, this goes back here since about 2020, August. And notice that we don't see a lot of trimmer up here upstream around the locked area. Most of it is downstream there, about 35, 45 kilometers deep. Now, this area right here, this trimmer map, shows you the well-defined Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, this is where all the trimmer takes place here. And back upstream here, as we go west here on the map, uh, is where the locked area is. It kind of sits just offshore, the Vancouver Island ranges, and stretches... Uh, all the way down the west coast or the uh, Pacific Northwest in Northern California and ends right here. And um, that's kind of interesting to see some activity uh, much closer to the um, to the uh, locked area. Let me go. Oops. Let me go back here to that and double check. Yeah, it just sits right offshore. Locked area is right here. So uh, not for sure what that means, but I I think this is. Building up some pressure. Obviously, it's been since uh, 1700, the last major rupture here along the Cascadia. But tonight, 446 epicenters of tremor. Once again, down into the southern Oregon area and this little blob off the coast here of Oregon. So I might want to watch this, folks. Uh, obviously, there's quite a bit of pressure out here along the west coast, North American Plate. And... Um, Cascadia is a sleeping giant. Let me tell you, a 9.0 or higher out here would it would definitely shut me down um, because I am well within that. Uh, here in Northern California, we're well within the um, shaking zone here. Uh, we would not get a tsunami, obviously, here in, Sac in the uh, Sacramento Valley, but uh, for the folks up here, they would, and it wouldn't be a pretty one. So hopefully those guys have a earthquake plan, and um, obviously there's tsunami evacuation routes up there all over the place along the coast. So good to be prepared. But uh, that's a little odd one here, folks. I'm going to watch tomorrow and see if this is still here. See if it increases or not. Uh, and if it is increasing specifically offshore and up uh, towards the locked area itself, I think that's something we may want to worry about. But for now, um, questionable. All right, uh, what else we got here? Um, check out the Mount St. Helen, or uh, let's check out Mount Rainier real quick. I know we had a little bit of swarming activity um, over the past couple days, not really being listed up here on the map. 
Let's see what we got. Uh, stand by for a second. Still some activity. Notice that. Uh, those definitely look like earthquakes. Go back to previous day. It's a little spotty. Definitely a little spotty. Some of this activity here, not for certain what that is. But those do look like earthquakes, folks. Um, I'm going to have to check with somebody see exactly what's going on because that's what earthquakes look like and uh, it looks like there's quite a few of them there at Mount Rainier. Uh, we'll check out Mount St. Helens here and see what we got. Um, a little bit of swarming over the past couple days, the past couple weeks. We'll view this seismograph station here, September low, but it looks like... Uh, and see what they have. A little bit of activity here over the last couple hours. And a little bit throughout the afternoon time frame as well. There's some surface waves, uh, S waves from the large earthquake there in the Philippines this morning time frame. All right, uh, what else we got? Um, Yellowstone, we checked that out. Space weather activity in the green once again look at the face it's kind of morphed a little bit here into a little bitty happy face now so first it was <laughs> first it was kind of sad now tell me you guys can't see that face right there <clears throat> i think it was last year i remember yeah that's right last year we had a kind of a creepy looking face around halloween here uh with the chrono holes on on the sun and uh, it's pretty popular. It made its way, the image made its way all over the place across the news and the social media. Uh, but for right now, still got a few days before Halloween, but uh, it's looking quite chirpy. Pretty uh, happy looking face there. It's good to see. Uh, although that coronal hole is facing us here in the coming days, that should amplify possibly some conditions for the three day um, coming up. So these are subject to change probably after the 28th time frame. Uh, no major solar flares currently happening out here. In fact, uh, oh man, how'd it get so big there? Okay, this is three day. We got, uh, looks like a little bit of sea flare activity. There we go, sea flare activity. Earlier this morning time frame, it looks like, in the afternoon, a couple of seas kicking off there, but uh, I believe the culprit is going to be this new sunspot region out here on the northeastern side of the sun. It's going to be uh, a couple of these. These are starting to rotate into view right now. And let's see if we can't get a better... Uh, we got 3131 and 3133, a couple of the newer named sunspots here listed up on the sun. This one's growing. Actually, all of them kind of look like they're growing. And uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we'll see some... Uh, some solar flare activity in the coming days from those two sunspots. Right now, 40% chance of a C flare, 5% chance for an M flare. Uh, so we'll definitely watch those in the coming days ahead as they uh, progress and hopefully evolve into something much more complex in their magnetic fields. All right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And uh, we will chat you guys a little bit later. Again, just be prepared. Definitely no need to be scared out here. Uh, there's always earthquakes taking place in California. It's you know it's been a while since they've had a five pointer, and uh, you know obviously there's some pressure build up out there along some fault systems, and there's a couple that's overdue. So each day that goes by, you know, it's just a little chance that we take here along the west coast, uh, possibly seeing uh, you know a big one out here. Just a matter of time before it does happen. Uh, some movement into the chilly area. Notice that uh, some very small microquakes, but also some deeper activity kicking up down there into the Prue-Chile Trench. So uh, maybe you're looking at a little bit of pressure transfer down here and uh, maybe some bigger earthquakes happening there in South America pretty soon because it's, it's been a little quiet. That's been our, been our little quiet area. All right, folks, have a good night. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later on. Peace out, everyone. Have a good night.